Hi, my name is Lance Wilkins from Tracy Bressler CPA and welcome to the second in our series of instructional videos on using sales tax in QuickBooks. The first video was an overview of the preferences that could be set and the different areas of QuickBooks that impacted sales tax. We're going to delve into a little bit more detail in this video and actually show you how to set some of those things up so that QuickBooks or, or that sales tax will work in your QuickBooks company file. Now we are located in California so that's the example I'm going to use and actually that's the location of this fictional sample company that we're working with here, Rock Castle Construction. So we're going to uh, use a sales tax rate of eight and a quarter percent which is the uh, the rate where we are here. And uh, so I need to set that up in my QuickBooks company file here so that the right amount of sales tax will be charged to my customers. Now the other thing I'm going to do is because I want to show you a little bit about sales tax codes and how those can help you. And of course if you watch the overview uh, you know that the codes tell QuickBooks whether an item is taxable or not taxable and if it's not taxable why is it not taxable. Well we're going to say that some of our sales are to retailers. So we have some wholesale customers they're going to buy products from us on a uh, resale basis. They're not going to get uh, tax charged on those things. They're going to actually charge their customers who are the end users of the product. And so we will need to uh, sell to them on a non-tax basis. Okay, so how are we going to do these things? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our sales tax items so that we can charge our customers the correct amount of sales tax. To do that, I'm going to go to the lists pull down menu. I'm going to select item list. And if I scroll down to the bottom of that list, you'll see that there are already some sales tax items here in the sample company, but we're not going to use those. We're going to set up our own. So I'm going to right click anywhere out here in this open space. From the pop up menu, I'm going to select new. And for the type of item, and this is just the item setup window, just like you would set up any item that you create in QuickBooks. But for our purposes today, we are setting up a sales tax item. So I make that choice, and the first thing I do is I create a name for this item. And I'm going to call it Kings County Sales Tax. That tells me what area it's for. If I was in a business where I had to charge um, several different sales tax rates because I had I delivered in different areas or had customers in different areas and needed to charge those different rates then I may have several sales tax items and I might use a number of names, you know, Fresno County sales tax, Kern County sales tax and so forth. So that's why I try to use a descriptive name there for the sales tax item. I'm going to create the description to be just the same as the name. And I don't have to do that, but it uh, it's going to help me if I know where I'm charging these different sales tax rates. Okay, so uh, I've got Kings County sales tax. The rate is eight and a quarter percent. And the tax agency, which is a vendor on my vendor list, is going to be State Board of Equalization. So, and that's going to be true for all of my sales tax items here in California. So there's my setup. That's complete. I can click on OK. And there's my new sales tax items, Kings County sales tax at eight and a quarter percent. That part's done. So the next step. I have those wholesale customers that I do not want to charge sales tax to. What am I going to do with those? Well, I'm going to designate those from an item on my sales tax code list. So I pull up my sales tax code list and I have one sales tax code that's taxable. You can see the check mark over here in the taxable column. And I have two that are non-taxable. Well, I'm going to add a third Again, by right-clicking my mouse and from the pop-up menu, choosing New, I will use the code RES and we'll call it Resale. It is a non-taxable 
code. And there I have it. So that's as easy as that is. So that's complete. Now how do we use these things? Well, what we need to do is we need to attach these to our customers. So I'm going to go to the customer center and I'm going to pick Christy Abercrombie and over here on the additional info tab here is the sales tax information. You see right now she's a taxable customer at the San Thomas rate. Let's leave her as a taxable customer but let's make her taxable at the Kings County rate. So I will save that saying OK. Now let's set up a wholesale customer. See, okay, because I want one of our customers to purchase resale and not be charged sales tax, so we can see how that works. I'm going to choose Chris Baker. So I pull up the edit window for Chris Baker, and in this sales tax section, I'm going to use the sales tax code that I just set up, resale. I'll go ahead and put him in uh, Kings County uh, sales tax rate. Normally, He's not going to be taxable because this resale code is going to come up. So he's not going to be charged sales tax anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and put him in Kings County. And then I'm going to click OK. So now I've created a sales tax item. I've created a sales tax code. I've attached those to different customers. Let's take a look at a couple of invoices and see how those work. So for, uh, for Christy Abercrombie, Let's choose a new transaction and let's create an invoice for her. Now, this window pops up that says there are estimates in the sample file for Christy. I don't want to use any of those estimates. I'm just going to click on cancel and close that window. But what I want to do is I'm going to say, uh, let's see, Christy is a retail customer, so she's going to buy a half a dozen brass hinges from us. Now, if you watch the overview, you remember we looked at the item for brass hinges, and you can set up items as taxable and non-taxable. And if you remember, brass hinges is a taxable item. We would normally charge sales tax on brass hinges. So I will pull that item up into my invoice for Christy, and we're going to charge her $7.50 for each of those, which gives us a total of $45 for the invoice, this is a taxable item, and if you notice down here at the bottom of the invoice, this is pulling from the customer file. She is a taxable customer. So tax is going to compute on uh, the, so that she's going to get charged this $3.71 in sales tax. And you see that's to the Kings County sales tax item, which is what we put in her customer file. That's where that information pulls from. So this invoice is complete and it's ready to go. So let's just go ahead and save that. All right, so let's set up an invoice for Chris Baker. And let's sell Chris Baker the same item, those taxable brass hinges. Now, since he's wholesale, let's sell him 50 of those. So 50 brass hinges. And uh, he's going to get them at, uh, let's say, $5 each. Okay, so we got $250 in brass hinges. But you see, in this tax code column, it now says resale instead of taxable. It said taxable with Christy Abercrombie because she was a taxable customer. Chris Baker is a resale customer because that's what we set up in his customer file. That's where that information pulls from. Still in Kings County but he's resale, so there's no tax you can see here that is computed on his amount. So I'll sh complete his invoice. And his invoice is tax-free uh, because he is a resale customer. So that kind of shows you how to set up the code, how to set up the item, how to attach those uh, to a customer, and how then that is going to affect an invoice when you create it. Now, of course, the goal of all this is to get a report at the end that gives you the information you need to do a sales tax report. That's what all of this process is for. That's going to be the third video. So now that you've finished this one, I would encourage you to watch that one. And what we'll do is we'll look at some of the reports and take a look at how this information is going to flow to a report that will help you create your sales tax return. 
So I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. Thank you.